welcome to another lecture of quantum mechanics uh, today we'll learn about the uh, orthogonality condition and orthonormality condition orthogonality and orthonormality so we must understand that the wave functions uh, behave similarly to um, vectors okay vectors we have learnt in uh, lower classes uh, that a vector can be represent, represented as ax i cap plus ay j cap plus az k cap now where ax, ay, az are components along x, y, z respectively. Now one can write in this format only because i, j, k are independent of each other. Right. Uh, now what does it mean to say it's independent of each other? It means that if you take a dot product, it gives you 0. Sorry, uh, if you take a dot product, this gives you 1. If you take this dot product, this will give you 0 and if you take i dot k, it will give you 0, right. Now, and what are the other properties, uh, j cap dot j is equal to k cap dot k equal to 1, okay, both gives you 1, where this i, j, k are unit vectors along x, y, z respectively. Now this is uh, this is the scalar product or the dot product, scalar product or dot product. Right. So if i cap i cap is independent of we say i cap is independent of j cap or instead of this writing this we'll say this i cap is orthogonal to j cap orthogonal to j cap right now we in this the analogous to this process the scalar product there's analogous to this pro, uh, scalar product we have this thing this integral psi star which we did for finding the probability this was what this was psi mod square equal to 1 now this this uh, this integration is the inner product or the scalar product okay. inner product since wave functions can be um, complex so this is inner product or scalar product okay so how, this is how we define the scalar product for wave functions all right so Remember this thing that we can only write in this format in three component format because i, k and j, i cap, j cap, k cap are independent of each other means you cannot just multiply any scalar to i cap and uh, you will get j cap never it will never happen all right you cannot have a component of i cap along j cap this is the whole crux of the discussion all right so let's define what is orthogonality mean uh, let's start with orthogonality Right. So, in this, uh, we say that two wave functions. Now, this is defined for two wave functions. All right. Two wave functions psi n x and psi m x. Okay. These these indices uh, represents uh, different wave functions. Uh, is said to be is said to be orthogonal is said to be orthogonal if it goes from minus infinity to plus infinity psi m star x psi n x 
dx is equal to zero. Now n is not equal to m in this case. We can see the similarity in this discussion also. If i this these two are same, we get one. If these two are different, we get zero. Okay. Similarly, like this, we can think of it. So, what does it physically mean? It physically means that if a particle is in a state psi m, it that cannot be found in the state psi n simultaneously. So, physically, it means that it means that if a particle if a particle is in a state is in a state psi m x that cannot be found so let's say then then it cannot be found in the state in the state psi n x simultaneously all right so this is the uh, physical meaning of uh, this uh, mathematical expression all right so next let's talk about orthonormality orthonormality okay now there are two wave functions now this is also defined for two wave functions two wave functions now these are two terms okay if you look at it closely this is two terms this is ortho that comes from the orthonormality condition and this one comes from the normalization condition okay so if we have a ortho if two wave functions are orthogonal to each other and each of them are normalized then this property holds so let's write it down in mathematical terms wave function psi m x and psi n x are said to be are said to be orthonormal orthonormal if integration goes from minus infinity to plus infinity psi m x psi n x dx now this is equal to zero n is not equal to n okay so this is the orthogonality condition we have this one right it's same now what else we extra neglect? we require this part the normalization no, normalization part so that means that this will be if we write down this whole thing again and this will be one if m is equal to n means if you have the same wave function then you should get one that this is what this is the normalization condition all right this is the normalization condition normalization condition okay so this are these are the two things which should be satisfied for you to say that okay two wave functions are orthonormal to each other and if each of them are not normalized only this holds only one of them holds this 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 one it holds so this is the same as this condition so we'll say it's orthogonal to each other now we can combine these two into one form these two expression into one form writing like this minus infinity to plus infinity psi m star x psi n x dx now del we can write like using Kronecker delta function now this quantity is called Kronecker delta function Kronecker delta function right now Kronecker delta function is defined as this let's write it down here okay so Kronecker delta is defined like this delta mn 
is equal to zero for m not equal to n and is equal to one for m equal to n. Okay, this is the de definition for conical delta function. It's used for uh, minimizing the. It's used for uh, like uh, writing this uh, mathematical expressions like these okay so you should remember uh, either of them okay so this is the combined uh, form of the ortho orthonormality condition so this is the orthonormality condition now these are also these two separately also combine if you combine them it's uh, called the orthonormality condition okay so this is the orthonormal condition orthonormality Right. So let's do a problem and see uh, what happens, how to work it out. Now let's look at this problem. It says that uh, consider two wave functions, uh, psi1, okay, this is the form of the wave function, this is another wave function now, and this x be belongs to in between 0 and b. Which of the following statement is correct? Okay, so psi1 is orthogonal to psi2 and is normalized, psi1 is orthogonal to psi2 and is normalized, psi1 is orthogonal to psi2 and is not normalized, psi1 is not orthogonal to psi1 and is not normalized. Okay, so these are the statements you need to check. So basically you need to check the orthonormality condition. Alright, so what is the orthonormality condition? You can write like this. So let's write down the solution. So to check orthonormality, you should have this for orthonormality okay so two wave functions uh, let's write down the write, write the conditions again okay so this is say this is n this is dx this goes this is uh, <coughs> 0 for m not equal to n now this is 1 for m equal to n all right so you have this orthonormality condition all right now if you check uh, let's see see this question can be easily solved once you have done 1d box you can directly spot which one is normalized which is not okay but since we have not done yet yet we'll follow the uh, diet rule direct method okay so that method is just solving this integration okay you have to take it twice so once you check for this uh, thing that we need to check for psi 1 that's you can do psi 1 or psi, psi, psi 2 star whichever you want to take it doesn't matter so now we'll take this psi 2 dx now this integration should uh, the wave function only lies between 0 and b so the integration will be between 0 and b okay before you before you see the solution you should try it yourself okay just go through the theory and um, try it yourself and then see the solution then you learn well all right so uh, yeah, uh, you'll just uh, plug in the uh, values. So this is one by b uh, sine uh, pi x by b. Now this is uh, if you take a star, it doesn't matter because uh, it's a real function, so it will remain the same. There will be no change. Okay, there's no iota out here. So and this one is two pi x by b dx. Now if you solve this problem. Okay, uh, so if, let's let's write it like this. So this is two by b square, zero to p. Now if you divide and mu multiply by two, sine pi x by b, sine two pi x by b, dx. Okay, so if you continue to solve like this, so what will happen is uh, you get this is uh, so you get one by two b square. Now this quantity, if you use the um, trigonometric function okay so uh, what happens to this this is cos this is um, pi x by b minus 2 pi x by b okay minus cos pi x uh, okay let's write it down here so that I can use this section also this is cos uh, pi x by b plus 2 pi x by b okay dx so this is the whole conversion now if you continue further you'll see that this is 2b square uh, 0 to b okay now if you solve this so you get this is cos 
this will give you a minus sign and my cos of minus x is uh, cos x so we just write it down directly this is uh, pi x by b okay minus cos 3 pi x by b okay dx now if you solve each of them so let's integrate them and i will put the limit later on so this is in uh, this will be um, sine and you have b by pi sine pi x by b 0 to b minus b by 3 pi this is sine pi x by b okay this is 0 to b so if you put these values what do you get this if you get put b here so it becomes uh, sine pi right and if you put uh, b here this becomes sine 3 pi and all this becomes zero if you put zero it's zero so this this integral comes out to be zero all right you can check it out all right now if you see this thing if you uh, solve for now this is this is satisfied okay that means they are orthogonal to each other but let's see if there's the orthonormative now let's let's check for the normalization condition okay so we need to check for normalization condition of what of the psi1 part because it says it talks about the normalization of the psi1 so let's just see so uh, for normalization condition uh, so we should have 0 to b psi1 star psi1 dx now if you write down the integration this is uh, this is simply the square of the function okay this is real function so we'll just write down like this uh, we'll just write the square of the function okay and integrate it so let's uh, multiply and divide by 2 sorry so this becomes uh, 2 sine square it will be 2 sine square pi x by b dx so this is 1 by 2 b 0 to b 2 now instead of this thing we'll write 1 minus cos 2 pi x by b dx now this is 1 by 2 b this is uh, you'll get x minus this is b by 2 pi uh, this integration will give you uh, sine 2 pi x by b now if you write down 0 to b okay so let's see what the integration gives you this is uh, b minus 0 right the first integral is b minus 0 uh, putting the upper and lower limits now this one b by 2 pi now if you put uh, b here it sine 2 pi right it's 0 and if you put 0 here it's simply 0 so 0 minus 0 so what you get is simply 1 by 2 so this is not equal to 1 right this is not equal to 1 we should for for this to hold we should get that it should be so we say that uh, this uh, quantity this quantity is not equal to 1 so that means that psi 1 is not normalized okay so it is orthogonal to we can write like this that psi 1 is orthogonal to orthogonal to psi 2 and is not normalized all right so um, let's see which option matches so psi 1 is orthogonal to psi 2 and is not normalized so third option is the correct answer okay thank you for watching have a great day you, if you find these uh, lectures useful then please uh, like like subscribe and uh, share with your friends